What's up everyone, Joseph here. I've reviewed the iPad mini, I've reviewed the iPad Pro, and now I've had my hands on the iPad Air, the M1 iPad Air, for just about a week, and I've put it through all my tests with this being my daily tablet, and I have some thoughts. Let's chat about them. Thanks for all the support with all these videos. I'm trying to get to a thousand followers by the end of the month and you guys can help me with that. So hit that like button, hit that subscribe button and thanks for all the support. So let's talk about this thing. This thing in my opinion is the perfect size. We have the 10.9 inch liquid retina display and I love the size of this thing. It's my favorite out of all the iPads by far. It's better than the mini. So this is in my opinion, the perfect size. But with it in this display, we have the volume rockers on the side. We have the Apple Pencil integration. We have Touch ID on the top. We do have center stage and we have a 12 megapixel camera. And then the most important thing in my opinion when choosing an iPad is we do have 60 Hertz of a refresh rate. So we know now and we've known for a while that 120 Hertz and that ProMotion display is safe for those pro model iPads, that being the 11 inch and the 12.9 inch. And you're not gonna see that down the line with probably any iPads underneath that, even being the M1 Air. So there is some overlap and I wanna talk about that. There was a huge jump from the iPad Air before this and the iPad Pro, one being very consumer level and one being very pro level. But as they've put the M1 chip into this thing, that comparison in that range of differences gets a lot smaller it becomes more of a choice you have to make and the reasoning becomes uh, something you have to really think about. With this, the iPad Air, you're paying way less money and getting a lot more. You're getting almost everything the iPad Air 11 inch has to offer, but the things you're missing out on is that 120 hertz ProMotion display, you're missing out on multiple cameras on the back, a LiDAR detector, but then you're also missing out on a better speaker system and face ID, because with this you do have the touch ID. So the decision that has to be made isn't really so much about the inside of this, but it's more so the outside and the exterior and the hardware of this rather than the software, because you are getting the exact same chip as you see in that iPad Air. But is it noticeable? Is the 60 Hertz noticeable? And to me it is. It's a lot less snappier. It's a lot less smooth with the 60 Hertz. But then the price, and that's where this gets interesting, is you can have this thing at 64 gigs or 256 gigs starting at 599, which is extremely cheap for an iPad of this level. But that's all you get. All you get is 64 gigs or 256 gigs. You don't have any options above that. So that might be another reason you have to jump up to the Pro is if you want a one terabyte, a two terabyte, or like a 512 gig one, you have to make that decision because you're getting a lot less with storage with choosing the Air. But with this one, you still get the accessories. You get the Apple Pencil as we've all known and love, and you guys on my channel know I love the Apple Pencil, and you get the Magic Keyboard, which is another thing I've fallen in love with since I've purchased it from my iPad Pro it makes the experience of a tablet just something not comparable to many other tablets out on the market and it's something i missed when i was using the ipad mini for some time so the good in this thing this thing is so fast with the m1 chip i can't even begin to explain how fast it is going in and out of apps how fast it is switching between tabs, multitasking, quick, smooth, and snappy. This thing is so fast for what it is, and it's almost overkill. So I've talked about it many times that the iPad, with what they've built into it with the M1 chip, is so far down the line and so much more powerful than iPad OS. And I think iPad OS has some catching up to do to really utilize what the M1 chip has to offer in terms of power. The screen real estate. This sizing by far is my favorite iPad. It's not too small, it's not too big. I'm able to take it with me to a coffee shop. I'm able to walk down to the water and type on it and write on it. I'm able to throw it in a backpack. I'm able just to walk around with it. 
I'm able just to use it as my everyday assistant and the size and the screen real estate on this thing is just about perfect. There was never a time where I picked up my iPad Pro and I missed that extra screen real estate. So with this, you're losing a little bit, but you're gaining a lot more in the portability of this and it being a user-friendly on-the-go tablet. So the battery. I did a day in the life video that'll come out later, but the battery using this thing at almost full force as my main tablet just on one of my Saturdays from waking up to going to bed, it lasted me almost the entire day. Pulling it off the charger at 100%, doing hardcore note taking, scripting, storyboarding, shot list, watching some YouTube, changing my music, playing my music throughout my home pods, just using this thing as my everyday tab tablet like I normally do. I went from 100% at about 8 a.m. in the morning to about 5.30, it went down to about 20% and I knew it was time to charge it up. But it got me a full day's worth of use and it was at full usage because I was using it for almost everything I was doing as I normally do with my tablet. But what I really noticed it was good for was planning. I was able to take this thing out at a quick glance and use it as literally my personal assistant, especially when I was like shooting stuff. To be able to take this out and have all of your notes right there and be able just to flip off the pen and cross things out and do what you need to do within a tablet is great. So my final thoughts, as someone who uses a tablet for everything, this thing is a must. I mean, for anyone that needs to buy a tablet, if you're gonna get an iPad Air, you're gonna get something that is great for what it is, but with this M1 chip, you're relying on it down the road and it'll be great with the software updates and everything that comes with it. And especially as iPad OS eventually catches up with the M1 chips, you're in for a good time with this thing. So I recommend this iPad to almost anyone. But if you're gonna have to make a decision between this and an iPad mini, your decision is pretty easy as you have a more powerful chip and you have a bigger screen size in real estate, but it gets closer when you have to choose between this and the iPad Pro. And some things might become important to you. And like I stated earlier, it's things like Face ID. It's things like 120 Hertz ProMotion display. It's things like a LiDAR detector. It comes with the extra camera. It's little things like that that'll make you decide if the iPad Air is right for you or if the iPad Pro is good for you. So that's my review. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions, comment below. And of course, as always, like this video, subscribe to my channel. Again, you guys can help me get to a thousand followers by the end of the month. And as always, thanks for the support. Thank you.